happen is I, I, I come in from time to time and give three days fairly intensive um, debate really. It's a, it's, a, it's a debate, lecture, debate. And um, it's a change of pace for the students. Um, and I really have, over the years, from an initial um, thought about when I actually began to study painting years ago, um, I knew very little about it, and I think that helped. I wasn't told anything. I had first-hand impact of everything I saw. And I was also um, very much um, close to a lot of musicians. I shared a house. And their parlance about their abstract language helped me enormously. And I don't think it's an easy, um, it's a sisterhood. It's not a, um, something that can be limply put from one to the other. And people have asked me if I paint music. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm interested in the way that musicians behave first of all, uh, in terms of uh, an abstract language can have a vocabulary and they have, um, when you hear a piece of classical music, there's always 10 lines about its structure, which I find incredibly interesting. And I don't find a, a description of a narrative, right? that's just personal, um, about painting. I'm, um, the narrative in painting has never particularly switched me on. I know it exists part of the library I don't really go into much. Um, so I, I talk about structures of different kinds in, in painting, but it's all basically to do with a, a thought that I had that an art school with all these disciplines in it, um, the big ones that have filmmaking and boat designing and aeroplane designing and dress designing, I wondered if there was anything that could be said that the people were involved in. And I thought it was, a, in the end, that it was really about the choice of elements and the way that they were then choreographed and fought for. This um, choreographic elements are stunningly important to me. I, I go to master classes when I can in music and in dance because the way that they operate feeds me in terms of painting. And the way that one selects um, things that are paintable, for me, it's not subject matter. Um, it might be, you know, um, from a dead cat in a dustbin, or, um, you know, somebody with a head on the side, as you have at this moment, um, with light on a huge wall. It's a question of dynamics. And I think that it's strange that we can even though we're not hugely musical, we can tell 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century music by a few bars, and you can even tell what kind of nationality it is. And I think it's in a way the same with painting. There's a dark and light resonance which lives in a century. So I, I talk generally about how the eyes work, which is always very interesting to students. I was taught in the RA and a certain amount of dynamic um, anatomy. But I've always been interested in how we, we relate. And I don't think it's ever been, for me, to do with ego. And I really rather find it strangely um, repellent, actually, when people talk about their ego all the time, and the, that you're born with an ego, and you're born with a talent. I have no idea that you're born with a talent that is if it's worthwhile, you nurture it. And you look sideways, forwards and backwards at literature and music and all the other things that somehow um, involve putting elements together. And I think that's how a painter is, is in a way deepened. Um, and I found the, the quality of modernness strange. And I think it comes out no matter, um, in a way, whether people are... In fact, it comes out less when they're actually implying that they're modern. You know, there's a kind of... Uh, we won't talk about today, because I do have um, very strong views about that. So I talk about how the eye works, how the dynamics... This is going back a bit. The dynamics of uh, 
the series of seri uh, talks that um, I went to as a student on um, the basic dynamics of a rectangle and how it works, um, or how it could work, Harry Thubaron and Victor Passmore. And I went on to really, I, I thought this, the music and this, these lectures and my knowledge of um, playing tennis seemed to relate. And I couldn't have told you at the time, but it seems more and more that the space that one inhabits has a dynamic in it. And you have to cohese, obviously, three-dimensional space with the truth of a 2D. And I don't think it's simply done. I think people run at it too fast. And I think with students, um, I do try and surprise. And um, the times when you're, you know, you're actually stopped in your tracks about something is um, the most fruitful, or when you're stuck. Because most painters you know, make themselves comfortable, which means that the brain is comfortable and predictable. And therefore, you have to try to make people very uncomfortable and keep them on your side. So that's what I do, which is uh, maybe it may not be useful or even re relate to what they're doing. For at least a year, I've had so many students uh, at Royal College, and you know I've known them for seven years sometimes through their courses. And they say, we didn't understand you at the time, got the drift. But it took at least a year before you stumbled over something and it became clear. And I learned like that, and I'm still learning. Um, it's really a little bit more about how I learned and how I feel strongly that if you're faced with yourself and having to solve things or uh, place a custard pie over everything, that's your, supposedly your, um, your interpretation of it. It doesn't really work like that for me. It's to do with um, fundamentally trying to um, work out what, what things are about. And um, it may be um, the dynamics of where you are, looking to the left or right, your height. Um, uh, it might be to do with um, Something that I feel very strongly about is, is that you debate, what the hell is it? And you lose yourself in this debate through your judgment and your capacity to think. And um, to keep those things nurtured, how do you sharpen your eyesight? How do you sharpen your judgment? And that's all I've ever tried to do. And the work takes care of itself. Um, and I'm uncomfortable with what I see think about something. It evolves. I have to maybe lose about 3,000% of a, a trail that I'm on. But I don't feel I'm working unless I'm on this trail. And I feel a little bit at sea these days, where um, people are expected to be formed, you know, maybe with a little bit more polish, at, at a very young age. I, didn't, I, we, I think we, it was a time when we realized that art is very long. And it, um, it takes a long time to accumulate the capacity. Perhaps you don't ever actually bring up something. But um, my god, the travel is good. And uh, you don't know what you can do. But if you're faced with your own things all the time, you get very bored. And I do find that students become visually bankrupt if they don't feed all these very, very um, wide-ranging parts of vision and thought, no matter what they're making. But if you, have you noticed I don't talk about painting, and I don't know how to do it. And actually, I, I, I feel very strongly about it. You shouldn't teach people moires that they fit into um, as an assumption. So, um, <laughs> fairly dodgy path, I carry.